Okay, just a little quick clip here of uh, my next project. And uh, my project is, is changing out the motor on my uh, 14 and a half inch jet uh, woodworking bandsaw. And I want to make it where it'll cut metal. So I have to uh, slow things down considerably. Uh, and so what I have here is a DC motor that typically come out of uh, uh, treadmills. Got a, uh, a pulley on it and a fan. Uh, I'm not sure if it came on this one or, or not, but I, I uh, took it off another machine and put it on this one. Uh, I have a pot that I uh, wired. It's a 10K pot. The uh, knob, I uh, turned on the light and uh, I fluted it instead of knurling it. I think it looks a little bit better. And uh, this is a, a motor controller and it's uh, from KBMM uh, uh, controls. And uh, it's, uh, it's rated to handle this size motor. Uh, this motor is a... Uh, Doesn't say. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say what size it is. Uh, it's a Pacific Scientific uh, from Rockford, Illinois. It's a SR3616-4707. Uh, typically these are either 90 volt or 180 volt motors. I think this one is probably 180 volt. <laughs> which is okay. Uh, this uh, controller pro produced 90 volts at full speed. So we we'll plug it in here. And uh, that's the way the pot all the way down. And you can increase the pot. You can increase the speed. And let me get a uh, piece of reflective tape here and we'll measure the RPM on it. We'll just put it on just like that. And uh, I've got a digital. Got a digital tachometer here. And we'll just see how fast the thing is running. And then we'll see if we can get it where you can see it. Looks like about 7,500 RPM, which is way too fast. <laughs> we don't need it to go that fast. So I can do some adjustments here and, and adjust the match down so it doesn't run near that fast. Uh, typically, I'd want it to run uh, probably 17.5. So uh, let me unplug it here and we'll try adjusting. Yeah, and max on it. Okay, that is about 12,000 RPM. I don't think we need to go that fast. That's about uh, I'm all that's steady here. It's about 4100 RPM. Now let's do the minimum. Okay, that's about all we're going to be able to adjust out of it. And it's running. Okay, that's 
I'm getting about 3,600 RPM. So that's not too bad. That's uh, probably the same as a motor that's in there. 750, somewhere along in that range. So uh, I think we can live with that. Uh, it's a uh, small pulley on it and uh, uh, may increase the, the size of the other pulley. But uh, I think this will, uh, this will definitely go and I think we'll have the torque down on the low end. So anyway, that's my short clip for this, uh, this segment. One of the things I wanted to show here is uh, a little trick I learned about using uh, digital calipers. Very handy devices, uh, although uh, not extremely accurate, but uh, they're, they're a good guesstimator. Uh, what I have here on the lathe is I'm turning a uh, crankshaft for a little engine, single cylinder engine that I'm building. And uh, this is the uh, crank pin here that I'm turning. And I need to turn it down to uh, three eighths of an inch. Uh, and uh, so I wanted to show you how I uh, keep track of uh, where I'm at and, and so forth. Anyway, uh, digital calipers, I zero them out and I take it up to uh, the finished dimension or where I'd like to get it, uh, which in this case is uh, 375. And let's see if we can see that. There's 375, hit zero, okay. Then when you measure your, your uh, part that you're turning, it gives you how far you need to go. And in this case, it's 38 thousandths. So uh, I can uh, crank in on my uh, cross slide uh, a little bit, sneak up on it, and measure it again. And uh, as long as I don't change the zero, I'm always calibrated to that uh, three eighths of an inch. So that's a real quickie. Another little uh, quickie here I'll show is my uh, lathe dog. Uh, I bought a set of these lathe dogs uh, way back when and never have been able to use them. The, the tang that came out to fit the face plate was too big and uh, never really uh, never really used them until I needed to have another uh, dog that I built, but uh, I saw these and I said, well, I'll modify it. So what I did is I whacked off the tang, drilled a, a quarter inch hole and put a piece of uh, quarter inch drill rod in there. Uh, it's just uh, a friction fit. Uh, and uh, that's pretty well it. Uh, stuck the rod in and uh, you can uh, put different size rods in if you want to turn it way out, but this is basically turned out the end of the uh, the uh, den setter there. So anyway, that's my uh, little uh, uh, tips for the day. Hi, this is Herb again. Uh, everybody seemed to be showing off their hammers on YouTube, so. I thought I'd run a little uh, short clip here and uh, show you my hammer collection. Uh, the oldest one in the group is uh, this one here. This was actually my dad's hammer and I've replaced the handle on it at least twice. I think the last time I replaced it was probably 30 years ago, but uh, it's, uh, it's a good hammer and uh, it's a wedge and uh, it uh, Needs tightening up every now and then, but it, uh, it has worked well for me over the years. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight uh, Special. I think I bought this one uh, actually to keep up at the ranch uh, when I had my ranch and uh, 
to keep a hammer up there and then I sold that wrench I uh, brought it home. Uh, got a variety of uh, rubber mallets. Uh, this is a dead blow. Uh, another uh, dual face, these screw off and there's uh, various ones that you can screw in there. I think there's one that's uh, stainless steel and these are various uh, varying durometer or softness on the, on the hammer. And this is my favorite. I just got this hammer. I bought it on eBay. It came out of England. Uh, it's a Thor and it's a copper on one end and raw out on the other. It's a Thor number one, I believe it was. And it is perfect for, uh, you know, tapping things down on the, the, uh, in the vise to uh, get them seated or uh, uh, adjusting whatever. It's uh, I am very impressed with this hammer. It was uh, not too expensive, and uh, I absolutely love this hammer. Uh, some small ball pins. This is a plum, and this one's probably close to 50 years old. Got a little rust on it. I haven't used it much. Uh, this one. Uh, I know is at least 40 years old. Uh, I've got my initials scratched into the uh, handle, and uh, I probably well, it's a it's got a name on it there. I can't quite read it, but uh, I think I got that one uh, back uh, in the uh, uh, very early 70s. Uh, this hammer here is a. It's about a two and a half pound fiberglass handle hammer. And when you really need to persuade something, this is a, what you do with it. And this is a, a ball peen hammer. It's, again, it's made in China. It's a 16 ounce uh, hammer. And uh, it, uh, it does the job. Anyway, that's my hammers. So. And, uh, Adam had been talking about uh, uh, remote mic uh, to use when with his GoPro, and uh, I bought this off of eBay uh, several months ago, and I thought I had problems with the first one, but it wound up that it was a, a connection problem that I soon resolved. And what it consists of, this is a the transmitter clips on your belt. This is a microphone that you can clip on your lapel. And this is the transmitter uh, that uh, hooks up to the GoPro. And this cable here is a GoPro accessory. It goes into the, the mini uh, uh, USB port. And it's got a stereo. And that's very important. It's a stereo uh, plug on the end. And what my problem was when I did, first did this, I didn't realize it was stereo, and I used a uh, just a monaural uh, two conductor uh, adapter uh, to plug into this, and it didn't work. Uh, but I soon found out that it was uh, was stereo. Now this is monaural and uh, two conductor. And it plugs into this stereo, but it, it, it works okay. It doesn't plug all the way in, but uh, that's pretty well it. It has an off and on switch on the bottom. And the receiver here also has an off and on switch and a volume control. And I found just setting them in about, about the middle works quite well. And you can see that it's actually uh, picking up my audio that it was. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, that's the uh, remote mic and uh, this was very inexpensive it was somewhere around uh, 10 bucks and I paid more for the GoPro cable and I actually had the uh, adapters in my uh, collection so that's the uh, that's the remote mic Another little quick thing that I wanted to show is uh, 
my uh, felt wipers for the uh, uh, lathe here and uh, I'm not quite finished with it yet I need to build a cover uh, so I don't get any uh, uh, chips down between the uh, the ways and these wipers but uh, there was already these two holes were drilled in the uh, in the saddle and so I built a plate and uh, if you can see here it has a little notch out for the uh, the ways there and they're straight on the other side so then I took uh, some uh, quarter inch felt I think it's maybe it's three sixteenths and uh, wedged it in there it has the cut out the same way and so these these go down and contact the ways and uh, so uh, it works quite well it, it does a good job of, uh, of uh, keeping the ways clean uh, but uh, thought I'd show that I'm gonna build a uh, little aluminum cover that is attached here comes up over the top and is bent at 90 degrees these will be uh, cut down a bit and it'll come up and uh, protect the uh, ways from chips falling down down behind and uh, that should uh, pretty well complete the project thanks